Now, this parable is a clear reflection of the context in which Jesus told his parables. That is, he's talking to Galilean farmers and to people who knew the practices and experiences of the farms, just like I grew up you know, in the midst of farms in southwestern Ohio, and I knew what was going on on farms because I worked on them and all that. Well, this is a parable that builds on the experience of Galilean farmers who regularly experienced sowing a lot of seed that didn't yield anything. And it's profoundly discouraging when you, you know, see things come up and they start and then bloom, they die. All people who work with gardens and on know this experience. But it was especially the case in Galilee because of the character of the soil and uh, lots of ground with very thin soil. So this is building on that experience and using that as a parable for the preaching of the kingdom of God or for the kingdom of God. The general thing that happens, it was true in Jesus' day. I also notice I hear an awful lot of uh, rhetoric of discouragement among people who are concerned about the kingdom of God, that there are a whole lot of things that die, things that just don't work out. And people get discouraged, think, oh, the world's going to hell. Uh, There's no hope. There's no basis for any expectation of the fulfillment of the hopes of the government of God in the world. And so they get discouraged and give up. Well, this addresses that experience in relation to the experience of farmers. The parable describes then what happened on Galilean farms. And the, and the spirit of this is, you know, of Jesus telling them what they already know and have experienced. I mean, it's like, you know, you know what it's like with sowing seed. Sower went out to sow. Some of it fell on the path. Birds came, ate it. So it's that kind of inviting of their remembering their experience that is the spirit of this. And the contrast, of course, is between the three kind the seeds that yield nothing and the harvest of those that do bear fruit. The description in this parable is a hundredfold what it was in the Galilean context, an absolutely inconceivable harvest. Most analysts think that you know the harvests were generally you know a good harvest would be 15 fold 10 fold was acceptable and what that meant was it was the comparison of the amount of seed that you would sow and the amount that you would get at the end of the harvest so 10 fold was like you'd sow one bushel and you'd end up with 10 15 was you know a harvest of of uh, of 15 so a hundredfold was a harvest beyond all expectation. So it is a metaphor then of the kingdom of God and of the great fruit of the kingdom of God. Likewise, 60-fold, even 30-fold. 30-fold was like twice what would be a normal harvest, even a good harvest in the Galilean context. So it is great good news about the promise of the kingdom of God. The way in which Jesus interprets this parable then is in relation to the experience of those who are telling the stories and who are trying to communicate the word. And it's describing different ways of hearing. And my own sense is that this is addressed also to the audience, to Matthew's audience, addressed as disciples, encouraging them to pay attention to the way in which they are hearing the story and of examining themselves in terms of how are, how are you hearing? You know, are you one who is hearing the word but uh, eh, shallow and uh, without any real commitment? Are you hearing the word but you're thinking about money and getting along in the world and that that's distracting you? So, What's going on in this interpretation, then, is first of all, 
It's inside information for the disciples. So you as listeners are being addressed as Jesus' disciples. And so the first dimension of its dynamic is the contrast between the parable which is addressed to the whole, this huge crowd along the shore, and then the smaller group of the insiders to whom Jesus is giving clues about the meaning of the parable. And the impact of this is then to invite the listeners to examine both themselves and to think about the various ways in which people hear. So how do you hear? That would be you know, a question growing out of this. But that's what you want to do in, in telling this is to invite people you know, to reflect on their own ways of hearing.